Hello, Jordan. Hola. Were we supposed to change clothes to let people know we were doing a podcast on I just, another day? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have, yeah, I, I have the, you know, I have a lot of hats, a lot of beer branded hats. So I thought I'd just start wearing them on the podcast, but I know, you know, people are going to say, oh, I knew he loved Coors, but just know that I'll wear any brands. Send me a hat if you don't like this hat. See, this is my way of getting free hats. My address is on the bottom of every beer business daily. So I have all the standards. I have that Bud is a good Light, looking Coors, hat. Corona. Yeah. Well, here's Jen Litz joining us. Well, I hear somebody at the door. Biscuit, will you go get it? Hello, Jen. Biscuit's like, I ain't doing shit. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> it's for the birds. I feel this, like I just saw you, but that's All this weird. clean living. All right, Biscuit? Clean living. I know somebody who doesn't do clean living. That's John Lang. Oh boy. Hello, John. <laughs> How are you? How the hell are you? This is John Lane, of course, the proprietor of the Winking Lizard chain ah. in Ohio. And uh, always good to check in with you. Good bellwether for on premise. And uh, uh, so, how have you been? And how are things going in your neck of the woods? And well, and by the way, welcome to BeerNet Radio. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me. This is pretty cool. I, yeah. I, I suppose it's nice and warm down there. It is. It's yes. very nice. It was, it was uh, 36 degrees when I got up this morning, so Ooh, it's boy. coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Well, it's been an interesting 18, 19 months, hasn't it? Yeah. And uh, we're, we're coming out of it just fine. I mean, uh, it's, uh, we're watching uh, our share of uh, beverage sales just keep growing every single month compared to 2019. We're about, I don't know, 95, 98% of where we were in 2019. And that's basically without taking any price increases. Mm -hmm. uh, and no is, one's passed price on to us, so we haven't passed it on to our customers. And is that when you say back, is that like dollar sales or tra how about traffic? Is it about the same or no? Uh, I, I, that's dollar sales. It's, it's hard to judge traffic because traffic's just different, right? So we don't have that traditional lunch anymore, but we have an, ex I call it extended lunch where people are coming in at two or three in the afternoon, they're hanging out, they're getting an early dinner, uh, early happy hour. We don't have a traditional happy hour anymore. It just kind of just flows through. But I think what's affected the most is uh, the late night business. There's really isn't much after 10 p.m. anymore. Hmm. Interesting. People just want to get in, get out, get home, and yeah, think, watch Lego movie or whatever. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's it. I think a lot of habits, um, different habits were recreated. Even football, even if Ohio State games on at 730, it's like we do a ton of takeout and we might get a little bit of a, we get a really good dinner push, but people are not hanging out for the entire game like they used to. So do you guys do any beverage with your to go? You do, right? But you said that doesn't really move the needle for your beverage business, right? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely uh, does a lot more than what it used to, but it's still not like, you know, a huge driver. Yeah. Do you think that it's fundamentally changed now, John, like your business going forward, your model is going to be, you know, these new daytimes or is that sticky or, you know, cause last time we chatted, you said kind of what you said right now that your 2019, you know, uh, BevAlk sales are approaching or your 2021 BevAlk sales are approaching 2019 but the on-premise just isn't fun like it used to be because you've got to wear masks, you've got to stay in place. So like, do you think that's part of what's kind of altered the day parts or do you think it's fundamentally different going forward? I, th I think it's going to be fundamentally different going forward until mm -hmm. something bigger happens. And that sounds awful, but something happens to the economy that jars it back we were talking about it today you know we we did close one of our downtown cleveland stores because we just don't we don't see the metro area and i think metro areas across the country are going to have some issues right mm -hmm. we don't see that workforce coming back in the near in the near future it's funny the plane dealer just made this big announcement and i was at a Ohio restaurant association meeting last night in downtown alliance and they go yeah, 90% of the workforce is back downtown in some hybrid fashion. So let's take five days and divide it in 90%. It's mm -hmm. about 
fifteen percent, and that's my guess is what's coming, you know, coming downtown. So yeah, people's habits of you know that they, they fundamentally change at least for now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the labor force is demanding right. working from home right now, mm-hmm. and companies, you know, everyone needs labor right now, and so companies are bending over backwards and going to do what they have to do to keep their employees. Right. What about your labor force, right? Are you able to operate per normal with a labor situation yeah. where it's at? I mean, my, my contention is, is that our sales, we would be kicking butt mm-hmm. if I would hundred, if I was a hundred percent of our labor, when we shut down, we had about 1,245 employees. We have about 1,040 right now. So we're mm-hmm. down, you know, 150 to 175 employees. And that's it in certain stores, it's like we get one store, you know, going in the right direction. Then we have another one that, you know, we need, it needs help. Now we are still open seven days a week. A lot of our competitors have much reduced hours. You know, um, they're, they're, they're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays or Sunday and Monday. So we're blessed there, but I, I, we've got weights at the door a lot of times and we just can't see them fast enough just because we don't have enough labor. And then on the other end of things, are your suppliers able to keep you in stock? Uh, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> um, man, um, so that's been all over the board. Like, you know, and I, I listened to a couple of your podcasts and, um, you know, of course, Constellation's been the, the biggest. And, and I'm not sure that Cleveland, Ohio and Ohio in general is on the top priority list right. for Constellation brands. So yeah, we've had a lot of problems with Corona and Modelo. And, you know, I, at, a, at first I was chasing product and, that, and then I just gave up. I'm just like, you know what? Our customer will drink what they drink when they come in. So we've had that. We've gone back and forth with bottles with the big breweries versus cans, you know, which I always thought the cans were the issue. Sure enough, mm-hmm. we had bottle, a lot of bottle issues this mm-hmm. summer. Um, and Coors Light especially was... Um, we, we took it on the chin for a while with Coors Light. And then even on, um, on the liquor side, um, you know, they can't get bottles. So, I mean, mm-hmm. we've had spot shortages of like Picard- Bacardi, Patron, mm-hmm. um, some of the bigger brands, but um, some of that, some of that seems to be smoothing out a little bit. And then the, my food counterpart, I mean, he's, he's just got it the worst. I mean, one of our top appetizers is spinach artichoke dip, right? Well, we couldn't get chopped spinach. We couldn't get frozen chopped spinach. He finds it from a tertiary distributor. He buys 120 cases. It comes in on the side of the box. It says made in China. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Chopped spinach? You could go into the grocery store right now and get spinach every day, fresh spinach. But you, you, you know, it's just, it's, it is, it is crazy. Supply can <laughs> That's yeah, really crazy. That is nuts. That is nuts. And then you mentioned, I mean, just talk, talking about macro stuff, you mentioned that nobody's passed pricing along to you yet. But I mean, I got to think, you know, we've heard so many suppliers are going up. So um, what do you think is, what are you seeing from your customers, you know, price sensitivity? Do you think they will bear that if and when it comes? And if you have to pass it through, does it look like they will just? Jen, you know, um, we've always been value-based. Mm -hmm. Uh, always on our pricing we've always been value-based you know and there's a lot of theories in our industry some some people say oh charge more you don't need then you don't need to turn a guest and you you make more to the bottom line we've always you know being the blue collar guys that we are you know what we want everything affordable so we've we've always been in that niche um, and this past year, we just couldn't bear it on the food side. We've had three price increases in one year to the, mm-hmm. to the tune of about 10%. And uh, we will take price on draft beer and um, some of our bottles on December 1st, because I'm, I'm hearing everyone's going up pretty much mm-hmm. in January. Mm-hmm. And um, I always... I, I laugh at the big guys because they always take price like I think the worst times, like <laughs> January 1 and September. Are you kidding yeah. me? January 1, everyone's trying to tighten down. December 1, no one cares. July, mm-hmm. I, I, we always typically take in December or July when people are happiest, you know, because mm-hmm. pricing, I think, still is emotional. So I, I'm really not worried about it because I look at our competitors and I think a lot of them have taken price through this. 
Um, we have on food, we have it on beverage. So, you know, when we go up a quarter or 50 cents on a draft beer and we're still at less than $6 for, a, you know, a pint of good craft beer, I don't think anyone's going to even, you know, bat an eye. Right. Agreed. So then one more for me before I, I'm sure Harry and Jordan are champing at the bit to get to you, but um, just, you know, I knew last time we chatted, you said regional craft is very strong, has been strong for you guys. To your point earlier about Mexican imports being Ohio based, um, you know, you before had said Mexican import bottles were doing really well, but you were just starting to test draft um, and domestics. Obviously you guys are a sports bar. What are people really drinking right now? Has it changed? Um, well, I, t I tell you, there's certain brewery. I mean, the, the local guys are just really on fire. Great Lakes, I mm -hmm. think, has done the biggest turnaround in one year. I mean, oh. you know, they were last to go to Cairns. And then uh, I think Mark and his team, Chris Brown over there, th those guys have done a really, really good job of getting Great Lakes back in the game because they really weren't in the IPA game. And I think yeah. local is IPA. And um, so they're in that game. And you know, we're, we're fired up with them because we're probably one of their biggest partners. So, you know, where they go, it, it, it really helps, but you know, I'm, I'm still a core guy. And I think through this, I I'm blessed that I think that I was a core guy. Cause I think when people came back in, they, they want tried and true. So, you know, we're still banging out Sierra Nevada hazy. We're still banging fat tire. You know, we're still doing well with Ryan guys truth. So some of the guys that brought me there, um, you know, we're doing it um, with them. So uh, domestic beer is down a little bit on the draft side and, and the package side. But a lot of that is when you look um, over the past year, I mean, we didn't really have sports last, mm -hmm. last year. We didn't, I mean, we were shut down at 10 o'clock last year in December, January, and February. And, and we finally had the Browns doing something now, whether they do anything this year or not is another story, all the hype, but um, we're seeing people come out for football. And so that drinker along with the seltzer, which um, we've seen an increase of seltzer the last two months. And again, I think it's because of that sports crowd. Which brands is it across the board? It's just ball. It's just cans, right? Or yeah, I'm just doing um, pretty much uh, white claw and cork with Boulevard is mm -hmm. doing very well. And um, I watched your segment with um, the ranch water, the uh -huh. lung, Katie. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, you know, we just rolled that out and it's doing very, and I think it's delicious, by the way, it's really, really good. And we just rolled that out um, and it's uh, last month and it's doing well. Diageo just got it in. So, yeah. Interesting to hear that it's doing well in Ohio. Cool. So John, how have your um, number of tap handles kind of changed from, you know, over the past 18 months? Do you have, yeah a lot less or has Not it a, kind of stayed consistent? We're, we um, we've used always kind of used the 33 model. So 33 pretty much tap handles in all of our restaurants, but uh, we were probably using about 28 to 29 of them. Cause the, the key was when we were doing some rotation, you know, you just didn't know what was going to happen. Are they going to shut us down again? Are they going to cut hours? So we were around that 28 to 29, and now we're doing about 31 to 32. We're still keeping one open, kind of free, um, just so that we have no waste whatsoever. So, you know, we probably picked up a little bit more than our competitors did, to tell you the truth. Um, but again, I think it's, I go back to those core brands, you know, we focused on the core and I think when you're not, I think the better question is how much rotation we've done a little bit less rotation and a little more just focus on core. Gotcha. And then, you know, kind of jumping back to beyond beer, um, it, you were kind of making it seem like you're doing most of the beyond beer and packaged. Have you experimented with any sort of draft seltzer at all? No, um, to be honest with you, um, I am not bullish on the category in casual dining. I think that um, when you start chasing flavors, look, I'm, 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 I'm a grandpa in the industry and I'm a grandpa at home. And I lived through the Smirnoff ice days. And, you know, when you start chasing flavors, I think that's, that becomes a death knell. I just, at least not for the category, but I think, you know, and I'm talking winking lizard, I'm talking casual dining. I think for us, I'm not sure how long that's going to last, to be honest with you. Um, it, 
and and I and I could be totally wrong, but you know we we got into a little bit with with uh, Seltzer before the pandemic. Then the pandemic hit, so it hasn't been a really fair test because you don't have the sports. And now when I I look at um, the sports coming back, that's another option for that guest to drink something that's lower in alcohol and drink volume. And so we were about, it was about 14% of our domestic sales. That's where we categorize seltzer uh, through the summer. And it jumped in September and October to about 18%, pretty much at the expense of um, kind of, it's, it's definitely doing more than uh, Budweiser. And it, and this past month it surpassed doing more just two flavors, um, cherry and watermelon, doing more than uh, Coors Light bottles, believe it or not. Hmm. And you think that bump, you know, is in line with kind of sports returning? Yeah. Um, it, when you look at uh, beer overall, I mean, beer uh, 2019 was about 65% of our beverage mix. And um, it dropped about 60%. And the last two months, it's gone up back up to 62, 63%. So beer's kind of the last thing to come out of this. Spirits actually are the one that have held their own and kind of grown a little bit. And actually looking at wine, wine has gradually grown a little bit. I think I go back to the, you know, we're getting more of that dinner business and then they're going home and we're not, we're getting a little less of the party business. Interesting. Don't chase the flavors. And, you know, when I think about that, John, you're right. I mean, so we have had something in that category since the eighties, since California cooler. And then, um, then it switched to Bartles and James, and then it switched to Smirnoff ice. And then it's kind of hovered around there. And then now we have hard seltzers and F and B's and there's always something in that category that's hot, but it's, it, it always changes over time. It's not like, it's not as solid as a uh, block as, as light beer or craft beer or imports. Um, so it will be interesting to see it, how far it wanes as it is currently waning a little bit, uh, but still holding strong, at least off premise. Now, I don't know why I'm giving you a lecture on what's going on in the industry. I'm supposed to be here asking your opinion. Everybody knows what I think. They, they read it every day. So <laughs> what, what do you see as your uh, big challenges as, as, uh, as we have uh, going into winter um, are we going to see on-premise pullback a little bit? Boy, I, I hope not. Um, you know, we have a we have a few things that I you know it's, are going to I mean a hit especially us that are um, going to be a little brutal that we've got to get over. And one is you know regulatory stuff, the forced vaccinations for those employees over 100 employees. Let's not fool any uh, anyone. It's already been in the news. Some of it's squashed. It's going to hurt us. I mean, there's no doubt, you know, that again, I look back at the Obamacare days when we had to fill out the report and um, we had, you know, we had some Mexican Americans working for us that, I mean, one guy worked for us for 10 years, 12 years, raised his family, everything. And then when had to produce an actual social security card, we had to let him go. We lost 20 Mexican Americans and they they didn't go anywhere. They went to smaller operations, right? Where they can hide under the radar, which I, I don't blame them. We got to fix that. It's just, it's, I'm tired of yeah. talking about it. It's just stupid. That and the, and the mandatory vaccinations is, that's going to hurt us too. I mean, we're going to lose some people that are not vaccinated. And again, the smaller employer is going to be able to pick up on them. So, you know, us, that's going to hurt us. That will hurt. That's going to hurt sales. I pray that, you know, I know a lot of business owners have tried to get into the White House and chamber and try to delay this till after the holidays. I pray that happens. I, you know, just let's see where this plays out. I mean, the virus is starting to die off again. Now will it come back? I don't know. You know, the Delta variant sure, sure did. But I think those two things, that's, those are the two things that kind of are not in our control, but I'm worried about. Right. Coming back, you know, the, the restaurant industry and the bar industry, they've gone through the, you know, the restaurant funds and the TTB loans. And it seems to me like we're starting to see how far that can carry some people and that there's going to be a shakeout 2.0 in on premise. Is, is that something that you're seeing in your uh, market? Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, you, 
I mean, I, I, I ask the question all the time. If, if, you don't, if you can't open your restaurant two days out of seven days, how, how do you keep up with your rent for Pete's sake? How do you do it? I mean, we're already working on very small margins. You know, the average restaurant makes 4.7% before taxes. I mean, good Lord. Manufacturers always look at me and say, why do you do it? <laughs> You're crazy, you know? But yeah. um, so when you look at something like that, you, 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 you got to know that, yeah, there is going to be a shakeout. I think in the, you know, in the microbrewery industry as well, I think a lot of them, we're able to hold on because of those federal those federal funds, which is is a good thing for the short term. But I think we're definitely going to see more of a shakeout. The big guys got bigger, right? In every industry, the big guys got bigger, and so it's going to be harder and harder on the independents. Does all that mean? I mean, I'm hearing kind of maybe it's the hardest for casual restaurants, right? I know you guys have another concept barrio, right? That may be uh -huh. a little bit leaner to operate. Will you yep. guys be leaning into that more, maybe expanding that one more because it's a little less labor intensive, maybe? I don't know, maybe it's not, but. It's not necessarily a little, it's, it's a lot easier to operate, not mm -hmm. necessarily, um, you know, the menu is a lot, a lot smaller. It's a lot more prep. So you're not, you know, you don't need the, the highly skilled cooks to cook anything medium rare. It's a, everything's already prepared. You're just putting it in a taco. Um, but, and we can only lean into that in Franklin and Delaware counties. That's where we're licensed. So in Columbus, we're not, uh, there's already barrios here in Cleveland. So, I mean, we would love to expand more in Winking Lizard. We just can't look our people in the eye and say, we're ready to do it because mm -hmm. we're not. You know, it takes, takes two things to open a restaurant, um, money and people. And the 33 years I've been doing it, man, there's times when we've had people and no money. And there's times like now when we've got some cash in the bank, we could do it, but we don't have enough people. Will you be leaning more into liquor? Uh, I have been, you know, really the bourbon craze, um, mm -hmm. right. which I think is a great tie in to craft beer. I mean, it's flavored. You're not, you're not, um, you're not mixing it like with vodka. And so, you know, we've been heavy into buying our own barrels and, um, and, and yeah, we, we have leaned in into uh, the bourbon side. It's easy, right? And we don't have to clean lines. Mm -hmm. uh, we put an ice cube in a glass and we go. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's just, uh, so yeah, I think um, liquor will continue to be a driving thing when we can yeah. lizard. There'll what be a bourbon done? shortage. Don't you? There already is. Oh, there I already mean, is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because anything you have to age. Um, yeah. I'm well, lucky. Good. I'm I'm lucky. I made did the same thing I did in the craft industry ten years ago. Went down and met all the good old boys, and you know what? They they kind of take care of me. Same thing <laughs> as you know we've done in the craft world. Just introduce yourself. This is what we do. We want to do it right, and so that I'm I'm getting pretty taken care of down there. That's awesome. It's still a relationship business in a lot of ways. And, yes, it uh, is. Well, God bless you. You really are just. You're, we, we need more on-premise operators like you. The, there's just so many crackpots out. You're either a big corporation or you're a crackpot, you know? <laughs> Why aren't there more, in, you know, just solid, independent operators, you know, like that, like, like winking lizards? Why, so much. Jen? Why, Jordan? <laughs> Why? I don't know, but I have a, a story. I don't know. John, I don't know if you know this, but the whole reason I started you know, tracking you down 10 or 11 years ago is because Sam Calagione, who we had on the pod yesterday said, Hey, you know, I was new to working for Harry. He said, Hey, this guy's, you know, you want to know what's happening in the on trade. This guy is like my biggest account and he's based in Ohio. He's got like 20 locations in Ohio, go chase down John Lane. And so, yeah, I mean, to your point, you know, those craft guys, you guys go way back and you're a huge account for them, even though you've got a relatively small footprint, but you sell shit ton of their beer so a lot of beer yeah <laughs> yeah well that th they've all been good to me too so it's you know that's the hardest thing it's is introducing the new um and you know getting the guys that are you know new to the game with all the quality and making sure that they're you know they're paying their dues and in, in that you know they're they're doing things the right way and i think you know a lot of those those old timers they build it on quality and you just got to keep, you know, seeing that move forward. So 
Yeah, yeah. a lot of fun. It's been, it's been, it's, it's a great ride. Great yes. ride. It's a great ride. It ages us a little faster than we should be aged, but it, other than that, it's been, it's been fun. Yes. Well, thank you for drinking beer, John. It's always good having you on and uh, we'll check in with you again in a few months. And uh, that'd be great. Until then, uh, uh, Godspeed. I hope the Browns do well. Or is it, is it still, is that still, uh, is that still on Jordan? I don't keep up with the sports too much. Is that football? The NFL? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> okay. That's still around. <laughs> okay. Occasionally I'll catch a glimpse of a game on the TV. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, Thanks. have a great rest of the week and uh, we'll be in touch, John. Take care. Take care. Thanks, Bye John. now. Bye. Take care.